Hi, and welcome to Allen High School Chemistry. This is at the AP IBHL1 Chemistry, or first year college level of chemistry. Now, we are starting the acid base unit in these videos, but honestly, we've got a jump start in class already. Uh, in class, we've already done an inquiry on the conceptual aspects, some of them at least, some of the conceptual aspects of acid-base chemistry. I'm not going to lecture on those. That's what the inquiry was for. Now, there was also a page on anhydride reactions. And as part of our reaction series, I will have a video on anhydrides or I will send you to Renee McCormick's video on anhydrides. So we're actually going to be picking up our conversation on page three. We're going to start with a little bit of a review. Now you did a little bit in your inquiry, um, but I was concerned that not everybody got that. So I want to make sure that we are all on the same page with understanding pH and pOH, uh, et cetera. Now, we'll be actually doing some calculations of this later. What I want us to do is talk about some estimating that we would do. So first off, let's calculate quickly a few of these. If I have pH, so we have two formulas that we want to look at here. pH is equal to minus the log of the H plus. Yes, that's given to you on your free response. But like I said, that's kind of an illusion of help in some ways, because if it shows up on the multiple choice, you won't have that formula. Now, if we solved this for the concentration of H+, this part I don't think is on the formula, but you've got some algebra skills, right? Just bring the negative over. The opposite operation of log is 10 to the power. So those are our two formulas. Now, right now, we're going to focus on this one. So for this first one, if I did 10 to the power of minus 2, well, hopefully that's straightforward. I don't even have to plug that in to my calculator. If there are no numbers after the primary first number there under the pH, there's nothing in front of the scientific notation. All right? so. This tells magnitude, the number in front, remember, tells us magnitude. Now, when we have a pH like that, we have 2.00. The numbers here tell us measurement. All right, so that's just 1 times 10 to the minus 2. Now, if I plugged this in, instead put air 2.25, 10 to the minus 2.25. If you plug that into your calculator, you should get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, since this number in front is magnitude, only the numbers following the decimal place tell us measurement. So that's actually a 2 sig fig value. Now let's take a look at the 2.75. If we put in 10 to the minus 2.75, we get 1.8 times 10 to the minus 3. And since there's nothing following that, that would be a 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, AP, and I think this is wise anyway, because whenever you do mathematics, you want to be able to estimate, is wants you to have to estimate these for your multiple choice when you do not have a calculator. Now, I've already talked about the fact that if there are zeros after the decimal place, that's simply a 1 in front. But what if there are actual numbers in front? Well, I want you to notice that if this is to the minus 3, this is 2 point something. This is to the minus 3, it's 2 point something. So if in my scientific notation, I have 10 to the minus some power, then the number in front for my pH, in front of the decimal point, is going to be that power minus 1. And then it'll be point dot dot. That's how we get our magnitude. So for example, if I had uh, 4.98 times 10 to the minus 5, I take that power, take away 1, 
and my pH is going to be 4 point some number. Okay, so you'll just have to estimate. That would be the most you'd have to do on that. I think it's also helpful to notice what happens to as you increase the number in front. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Let's do it this direction. As you decrease the number times 10 to the minus power, okay, so I went from 5.6 to 1.8, and it's to the minus 3. Do you notice that as I decreased that number here, I got closer to the pH for that power? So the pH gets closer to being the power with a decimal point after. And that's a little tricky. I'm, I, I can't find really reasonable words to tell you that. But if you have to estimate, if this is a minus 5, pH is 4 point something. If this is a minus 7, pH is 6 point something. Because you will have to estimate uh, as part of your work for this. Let's move on. If you need more help with that, I can give it to you in class. Let's do a very quick review of naming and conjugating. Conjugating's the unique part. The naming is the review part. Now, do you remember one of my students came up with most of this? I ate something icky. So if your polyatomic ends in eight, then the acid's going to end in ick, whether it's per eight or regular eight. If your polyatomic ends in ite, then your acid ends in us. And all of them carry the last name acid. That word acid tells us that the cation is an H plus, okay? Now, this, we really had to stretch to come up with this. Ide is the only time you add the prefix hydro, and then it'd be ick, hydro, ick, hydraulic. Okay, we were trying to find something that would fit. Now, this means that if you want to go back and forth from name to formula, you have to know your polyatomics. If you don't know your polyatomic ions, and you are definitely at a pretty big disadvantage in dealing with acids. So you need to learn those. You've got to know your polyatomics. So let me just do a couple of quick ones just for review. Per ick must have come from per something eight. And per manganate is MnO4 minus. To get the formula for the acid, I add an H plus for every negative charge that I have, because H plus is my cation. So this would be HMNO4. I have ick. Notice no hydro in front, just ick. So that must have come from eight. And notice, remember, sulfuric, sulfic, and eight, and UUR, they just bring those URs back in and out like crazy. So sulfuric must have come from sulfate. Now, since there's two negatives, I need two positives to get the acid formula. And you have to be able to do this backward too, but I'd say 95% of the time you're going from name to formula, okay? Us, right? I ate something icky all night. I was nauseous. So this must have come from it. Nitrite is NO2 minus one. So nitrous acid needs 1H plus to balance that out. Hypo-us. Doesn't matter whether it's us or hypo-us. You still look to it. So this must have come from hypo-iodite. And hypo-iodite is written two ways, either this way, which I prefer usually the lowest electronegative goes first, the least electronegative goes first. But I have seen it like this. So don't get all bent out of shape if you see it that way too. I'd need one H plus either way, so it's either H-I-O or H-O-I, that's it, H-O-I, okay? Hydroic came from ide, right? I took a ride on a hydroic, hydraulic, okay? So that must have came from ide. With only two exceptions, ide is a single element anion. My two exceptions are hydroxide, well, if you add an H to that, we call it water, and cyanide. And it does follow the ide rules. So HCN is 
hydrocyanic, hydroic, hydrocyanic acid. This is hydrobromic. It's bromide, single element anion, not a polyatomic. I need one H plus to balance that out. All right, that is a quick review of naming. If you need more work on that, I can certainly come up with buckets of practice for you. Now let's talk about conjugating. This is a special word. You saw it in pre-IP, but as with most of what you learned in PAP, it got lost amongst, I don't know, the physics, the government, the English, the, all the other stuff we want you to know. And so I want to go over it again. And the reason that we have to recognize conjugates is often we will be given in equations and using, very handy, to use salts of the conjugate. And the salts of the conjugate is going to, are going to give us initial values. Now, if you don't recognize it as the conjugate, you start coming up with some wacky reactions, okay? Now, when we talk about these, the reactants or the, the kind of the foundational acid or base are the reactants. The product that forms when acids do what acids do best is called a conjugate base. So acids have conjugate base. Bases, when bases do what they do best, which is accept an H+, they form a conjugate acid. Okay, So you'll find Ka tab uh, tables of the acid, and we'll find we can calculate the conjugate. And you'll find Kb tables of a base, and we would have to calculate its partnering conjugate acid. Okay, just to clean that up. All right, so this is sort of the modified form or the resulting form is without an H plus because what acids do best is acids lose an H plus. So let's go back to that hydrocyanic, for example. All right, so HCN is an acid. When that does, what acids do best, they'll lose, you take away an H plus. So I would have CN minus, okay? This would be called its conjugate or partnering base, okay? Now, the modified form of a base just has an extra H plus on it. So a common base that we've seen many, many times is ammonia. All right, well, what do bases do best? They add an H, so instead of three, we'd have four. And since it was zero, we've added an H and a plus charge. We're going to do a few more of these in a minute. Critical, critical. Well, that started out as a star. There we go. Critical to understand this in, in terms of approaching the mathematics, but not only that, in understanding conceptually the idea of something we're going to talk about later, which are buffers. Okay? They're products. The salts of the conjugate are not going to react with your original acid or base, okay? So let's take a look at a model of this, and then in the next video, we'll address some more examples. So what is the conjugate base? If I'm looking for a conjugate base, this must be behaving as an acid. Well, what do acids do best? like that red there. Let me see if white's a little better for you. They lose an H and a plus charge. So if I lose an H, I've only got one H, SO4. Now it was neutral. If I go down by a positive, I have a leftover negative, right? Plus one, minus one gave me my neutral. Okay. Now what is the conjugate acid of this? This is called methylamine. And we're going to see quite a few of our weak bases are actually have as their foundation a nitrogen. Okay, so the nitrogen ends up being the core and that group, you should recognize that and be able to recognize it. We talked about it a long time ago, um, but it needs to refresh in our memory. That's called an amine group. Now, an amine group has that this lovely little pair of non-bonded electrons. And an H plus just loves to latch on to that. 
And so we've added an H and notice that I placed it on the amine portion, not the carbon. Carbon can only have four bonds. I placed it on the nitrogen part of the molecule. That's why I put the structure in, in hopes you could see that. It was neutral. I added an H and a plus charge. So that would be the conjugate acid of my base. So this is the base. Its partner is the conjugate acid. Okay. Now we want to wrap our minds around adding these salts. All ammonium salts are soluble without exception. So if I put NH4Cl into solution, I have added the conjugate acid of ammonia to the solution. So that's very important. So if I was dealing with an equilibrium with ammonia, I would have its conjugate acid present, the ammonium ion. Okay, now we're going to be working on an example of this, but this video is a little bit long, so I'm going to continue it in the next segment. So until then, this is signing off.